Welcome to the Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor City and the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Well, this time of the year, approaching 10 o'clock in the evening, it can get a little on the chilly side, certainly a jumper or fleece required. And under a year until the World Cup finals get underway here in Qatar, the fans eagerly awaiting the first World Cup to be staged in the Middle East. And this FIFA Arab Cup tournament seen as a prelude to that. And it's been a joyous tournament so far for the hosts. A game to spare, this match against Iraq for Qatar, and they're already Group A winners. Perfect position for the coach, Felix Sanchez, to make many changes to his starting 11. Akram Afif, one of the stars of the tournament so far on the right there, is one of the substitutes being rested for the forthcoming quarter-final match. As for Iraq, will they have an opportunity still to qualify along with Qatar for the last eight. Important evening for the Iraqis. Qatar with back to back wins over Bahrain and Oman. But Iraq will join them in the last eight with a win. And should, she, should they fail, then that could open the door to Oman or Bahrain, who meet in Al Rayyan in the other match to kick off at the same time as we do here at Al Bayt. So three teams in Group A, Iraq, Oman and Bahrain, still with a chance to join Qatar, the four Gulf nations in this Group A, in the knockout stages. Qatar already know who their opponents will be in the quarter-finals in three days' time. They will be the United Arab Emirates, who lost top spot in Group B earlier today to Tunisia, who won 1-0. The runners-up in this group, as I've mentioned, the three teams contending for that will face Group B winners Tunisia in the last eight. Qatar have only lost one of the ni last nine competitive matches. Here's how Group A stands. Looks very good, doesn't it, for the host nation. Iraq also unbeaten. After their draws against Oman, 1-1, and a goalless affair against Bahrain. But all the pressure off Qatar, that is for sure. Despite the fact they've lost only one of the last nine, Qatar, there's been several defeats along the way. That's uh, competitive, only one defeat in nine, but there's been a number of friendlies when they were the guest team in one of the European World Cup qualifying groups. They lost twice to both Portugal and Serbia, also defeated by the Republic of Ireland. They got a draws against Luxembourg and Azerbaijan. What a wonderful arena this is, it's quite stunning. Fully air-conditioned. Conditions very comfortable.
Qatar, the winners of the Asian title in 2019, already secured into the quarterfinals against Iraq at the Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor City. Iraq seeking to join Qatar in the quarterfinals. Teams lined up in readiness for the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise if you can for the playing of the national anthem of Iraq. Gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of the national anthem of Qatar. Qatar players with a burning desire to be competitive at next year's World Cup. And the changes from their Spanish coach, Felix Sanchez, nine of them from the starting 11 for the last match against Oman. Only Hisham Bassam in defence and Abdelaziz Hatem remain. As fully expected, coach Sanchez gives game time to many of the fringe players in the squad. There are first minutes at the tournament for goalkeeper Youssef Hassan, midfielders Ali Asadala and Abdullah al Hawrak, along with striker Ahmad Ala Eldin. Defender Pedro Miguel is absent from the squad. Referee is Bakari Kasama from Gambia, Sean Evans in charge of VAR. Sean Evans, along with his backup team. Felix Sanchez, four and a half years in charge of Qatar, meets uh, Zelko Petrovic. 
he makes three changes from the goal of straw against Bahrain three days ago. Mustafa Nadim comes into defence. Yasser Karim returns in midfield following his suspension after a red card in the opening game against Oman. And Hassan Abdel Karim gets his first start of the tournament. He scored the crucial penalty in the 1 1 draw against Oman, which keeps Iraq's hopes of qualifying alive. Players say this man has really accelerated Qatar's development in his four and a half years in charge. He was previously with the under 19s and under 23s. Petrovic barely had time to get his feet under the table with Iraq. Only came in just days before this tournament got underway after the resignation of Dutchman Dick Advocat. Down to kick off, almost a pass. This majestic arena, the biggest of these six stadiums being used at this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. The first and only project in the world, the Al Bat Stadium, to be covered with a membrane from the outside. Everyone join me for the countdown to As we get ready off. for Qatar and Iraq in Group A. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Away we go then. It is, of course, Qatar in their national colours, the maroon strip attacking the goal away to our right the pressure well and truly off them with a secure place in the quarterfinals as group a winners and iraq hoping to just do the job simply tonight any one of three results for iraq could get them into the last eight that's how tight it is between the other three teams who are looking to qualify along with Qatar from Group A, but a win will certainly put the Iraqis through to the last eight. A draw could be enough, and even a defeat. But that gets a little bit complicated, and uh, I shall keep my powder dry on that one until perhaps we surf close to that situation later. Delighted you could join us for our coverage up some of the early excitement <laughs> color the atmosphere a year early ahead of the big one in the Qatar World Cup 2022 interesting to see how this Qatar side perform this is not the team that we've been accustomed to in the opening two group a matches felix sanchez has very much got a core starting 11 i think you could probably say nine of the 11 are pretty much firm in his mind perhaps a, a couple of places that are less settled closing down there by ala abbas Our starting 11 made up from four players from the top team in this country, Al Sad, four from the Alder Hale Club, a couple from Al Garafa, and one the captain, Abdulaziz Hatem from Al Rayyan. Costly. 
just didn't quite find the cohesion going forward there. Qatar resting their two high-profile strikers, Al Moez Ali and Ashram Afif to the substitutes bench. Akram Afif. Those two will certainly be starters in the quarter-final against Tunisia. We do know six of the last eight. We do know one of the quarter-final matchups. It will be Group A winners Qatar against Group B runners-up the United Arab Emirates. Group B winners Tunisia wait to find out who will be runners-up this evening in this section. Group C winners Morocco are through, as are both Algeria and Egypt with maximum points in their opening two matches in Group D. And they are meeting tomorrow to decide who will finish top of Group D. North African teams have performed very well, as we expected they would. With Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia and Egypt all through to the quarter-final stage. Salman going back to Youssef Hassan. Perfect opportunity, you would have thought, for Felix Sanchez, the Qatari head coach, to find out about the depth in his squad. This is Ishmael Mohammed. This is how the table looks right now. Very early into the match between Oman and Bahrain. Decent approach play here from Iraq. It's an easy take in the end for Hassan. Mohamed Kassim was finding the room on the right side of that Qatar penalty area. not needing to qualify as hosts for next year's World Cup. Iraq are fifth in their World Cup qualifying group at the moment. It's too close to the goalkeeper, that Kasim Cross. Yes, Iraq are fifth in their Asian World Cup qualifying group with four games left. With many points, ten behind second place, so they're playing for third place, really, which would uh, be a playoff. be a playoff against the other third place team in Asian qualifying at the end of the third round and then the winners of that playoff would meet the fifth team in the Commabol region that's uh, South America of course and the final winners of that particular contest would come here for the World Cup All right, Eldin uh, coming together there with Munaf Went down quite theatrically. Al Eldin was just combing his hair, no more than that. Salman spent some time in Spain. Tarek Salman playing on the ball here with Real Sociedad. He was in their youth ranks. It's a 
foul on Musa Kadir. Challenge coming in from Abdul Karim. Salma, one of the Al Sadd players, who of course lost their coach recently. The wonderful Xavi Hernandez, who's returned to his native Spain, now head coach of Barcelona. It's only a matter of when rather than if that was going to happen. But Xavi has certainly left his legacy here in Qatari football. Four years of play with Al Sadd, then a couple of years as their head coach. Successful and respected players, Chavi Hernandez in history. He won 11 trophies during his time with Al Saad, and during that time, he says there's been a substantial development in the standard of the Qatar Stars League over the past two to three years. Better coaches have arrived, better overseas players have come here, local players have improved. He says the league is tactically strong and physically up there with any major league in the world. Chavi Hernandez says that, you've got to believe him. Here's Ishmael Mohamed. Backing themselves to play out neatly from the back. They've certainly got their support inside the old white stadium. Flagger for offside. Ends what looked as though it's going to be quite a promising attack. It's a right call from the assistant. <laughs> Salman. Hisham. Center of that three-man Qatar defense. What an excellent tournament, I think. Hisham Bassam. Where's number 15? He was actually born in Iraq, and his father is a former Iraqi international. He's on the ball now here. He played for Iraq in the 1990s. It's a special evening for the player in possession. Scares on either goal in the opening 11 minutes. Iraq won the last meeting of the two teams a couple of years ago in the Gulf Cup of Nations. They won 2 1 here in Qatar. Mohammed Kasim was in the Starting level, but both goals on that occasion. Here's Mohamed. It's a little too heavy for the run of Abdullah Al Rak. They really do like to play off the back. They're not afraid to get the ball off the goalkeeper and play very deep from inside their own penalty area, Iraq. Garib. Another ambitious pass, I thought. I've seen quite a lot of that at this tournament. Teams who like to play the long diagonals, try and make the pitch as big as they possibly can. 
One of the best in the business at that is Qatar's Hisham Vassal. He really does strike an excellent long pass to both wings. Hassan Rayed of the Air Force Athletic Club, 21 year old, with a throw here for Iraq. And has another. Inquiry, a polite inquiry to the Gambian referee Bakari Gasama for a penalty. VAR, of course, will be replaying that as I speak. But the on pitch referee not moved to favour Qatar. Sean Evans heading up VAR, the Australian will be along with his team checking and rechecking. Not sure he got the ball, you know, Munaf. He kicks right through Muntari there. A nervous moment here. VAR is certainly checking, as you can see, for a possible penalty. And having seen that replay, I think Qatar have got a very good chance to get this penalty kick. Because Munaf did not touch the ball. He certainly seemed to get a piece of Muntari. I think the referee will be asked to go to his review area here. Mm. There you go. Check over. What do I know? A few seconds of doubt would have been creeping into Iraqi minds there. coming together of feet and I think it was just possibly the momentum of Montari that took him over and Sean Evans heading up VAR did not think that that was a clear and obvious error from our on-pitch referee Bakari Gasama of Gambia and it remains goalless Group A at the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Ala Eldin under pressure from Rayed. Defender did enough. Good opportunity though for these. Qatari players who've not had too many minutes at the tournament so far to maybe put themselves in the frame for a start in the quarterfinals. They have to have an outstanding game, a lot of them. To work their way into Sanchez's thinking. Of course, it's not just about this tournament, it's about earning your way into the World Cup squad itself. And that's as much in the minds of the players as anything else. The anticipation so high for the first ever World Cup in the Middle East. Mohammed. Hey. 
Shem. Shem pass out. An accurate pass to Kidia. Showing a willingness once or twice to get forward down that left hand side. His wing backs, Mohammed and Kidia. Right and left, respectively. Ala Eldin. Now here is Ishmael Mohammed. Chance to measure across here. Looks up, see what's on. It's just too high for the. Willing player trying to get on the end of that. Ali Asadala, it was. Stretch for that. The kick against Hisham Bassam. Looks rather aggrieved at the referee's decision. Looks a good player. Certainly caught my eye at this tournament. As I mentioned earlier, Hisham Bassam uh, making this challenge was uh, born in Iraq came to Qatar as a teenager. on that by some distance Bashar Rezan with a disappointing free kick Forward by Munaf. Free kick goes against Ahmed Ala Eldin. A number of players in the Qatar squad were actually born in the country. A number of them of Sudanese descent. Talking about El Ala Eldin there, who was penalised. He was actually born in Egypt. His father came to Qatar as a civil engineer. Even though they weren't born in Qatar, a lot of the squad have been here for a number of years now. As the uh, born in Ghana, Muntari, nice chest off, but really doing much with that in the end. Ali Asadala, who perhaps could have worked better off the chess pass from Montari. Approaching the midway point of the first half. The rat might get in here. Flag stays down! Not enough on the chip. But he still had to work Youssef Hassan to keep out Basha Rezan. But it was a one on one for the Iraqi striker. And he just didn't get enough elevation. He's run offside there in the build up. But the flag stayed down from the assistant. It was Basha Rezan. A little more height on that, and it's 1 0 Iraq. 
as it is only a corner. The game's first clear goal scoring opportunity. Lausanne's corner. The referee has awarded Qatar a free kick. He'll be disappointed. Petrovic, his team's not 1 0 up. Could have gone for power, went for a cute chip. The goalkeeper was always getting there. This wasn't going in, but the goalkeeper couldn't take chances. with the ease with which Iraq played through that Qatar defence. Hisham Bassam. Rather Salman it is, wearing five. This is Kedia. Could have allowed that to go out and has actually gone out before the ball was headed behind and just gone in the air beyond the byline should have done better there i thought keddy from that position and that sloppy ball out from the back and not in shape here qatar will get a corner this time lack of Tension there, Iraq. Immediately put Qatar on the front foot. Corner will bring Hisham Bassam forward and Mohamed Wad. Captain, not seen a great deal of him so far. Abdulaziz Hatem, hero of the win against Bahrain with the only goal. And he will take the corner. Referee just having a brief word there with Yasser Kasim and Ahmed Ala Eldin. Still got an eye on those two. Hatem's corner. Comfortable defending there for Iraq. This tournament has provided us with some spectacular goals. I'd venture to say there's probably five or six that would make it into most leagues goal of the season list. There's been some high drama late on with some very, very late goals. And we're talking 98 minutes. We had a couple of those at least. Nothing here, but the best chance so far for Iraq. And Bashar Rezan, who's one on one facing the Qatari goalkeeper Yusuf Hassan, didn't get enough height on the chip. Goalkeeper saved comfortably. Salman. Mohammed, lovely feet. It could be in here. Ishmael Mohammed arrived at him quickly. Difficult one to control. Good offer though from the right wing back. Qatar, one of two reigning continental champions here at this FIFA 
Arab Cup Qatar 2021 as winners of the Asian title in 2019, the same year Algeria. We've also got through to the last eight the Crown African champions. This is the first pan-Arab competition to come under the jurisdiction of FIFA. Salma. Mohamed Wad. Salman. Hatem. Now Kidia. to Qatar, referee right on the spot there. Deciding that Rebin Garib is looking to hold his man. To the half hour mark as Qatar look to provide their first threat on Fahad Talib's goal. And do it there. Wonderful position though for Felix Sanchez to come into, not having to worry about qualifying. Quarterfinals, even be have competition for group winners. Already assured, even before they kicked the ball tonight here at the Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor City against Iraq. The play with freedom, the old handbrake is off. As I touched on earlier, a lot of players looking to work their way into the head coach's thinking for. The next match, matches beyond that. I've seen a great deal of Montari, the Ghanaian born striker so far for the host nation. It's that one incident where he went down and there they are. Checked for a possible Qatar penalty before deciding that it wouldn't be. Here's Mohamed Kassim. Hassan Red goes down quickly by Abdullah Alarak. There's the player who's had that chance for Iraq. He's got a free kick now, Pasha Rezan. She plays his club football. Number 13 for Iraq in Qatar. He's with the uh, Qatar Social Club team. Reminder a win for Iraq. Doesn't matter what happens in the other match in Group A between Oman and Bahrain. Iraq win, they're through to the quarterfinals. Mohamed Kassim with the free kick. A free head on that. Just trying to help it into an area there rather than score. Rebin Garib afforded a little bit too much room for comfort there by the Qatari defenders. Salma. Oh, 
Mohamed Wad. Looking for that diagonal again, Hisham Bassam. He tried at every given opportunity, he didn't quite see that it was on on that occasion. There'll be plenty of interested onlookers around the globe. Coaches, players that are coming here, possibly to face Qatar. The hosts in the World Cup next year, having a look at their shape and how they go about things. The style under Felix Sanchez, which is very much about, well, I'm going to call it the Barcelona model, really, because there's no other way to dress it up. He had 10 years in the famed Barcelona La Masia Academy, Felix Sanchez. And it's all about short passing, good movement off the ball, accurate passing. Those little triangles that Barcelona were so wonderful at. Not so good these days, a bit of a transitional period. As I mentioned earlier, Xavi back now as coach, but the days he was playing alongside Iniesta, of course, Messi and the rest. What a team. What a team. Corner here now for Iraq. Just about 10 minutes shy of half time. Away by Muntari. It was a good header. A cut up and break here. A pass is intercepted and a very important interception as far as Iraq were concerned. Turf. Three deciding it was a foul by Muntari. A promising first half for Iraq. Dangerous on two or three occasions. Had that wonderful chance for Bashar Rizan. Qatar not really threatened the Iraqi goal so far. It is Bashar Rizan with the free kick. Team trying to dance his way through. Abbas did not win the header. Didn't work off his own header though. Cassie, who was sent off in the opening game for Iraq in Group A, served his one match suspension and now firmly back in their engine room. Hassan Rayed taken on now by Mohamed Kassim. All left foot, slide rule pass, and they're in behind here briefly. Iraq could open up now, and it's tight. Just wouldn't open up. Be a very bright picture for Iraq here. Suggestion of offside, nevertheless, it was a beautifully weighted pass from Mohamed Kassim. And in the end, it was Abdul Karim who stretching the shank it behind for a goal kick. So far, it is FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. That was a penalty. Looking to find something for an open play now. The best clearance from Salman. Decent cross. Away by Wad, but not very far. 
Kasim, and the post saves Qatar. So unlucky, Yasser Kasim. Iraq come again. Driven across the face. Well, fine margins. Yasser Kasim with a pure strike here. Wad doesn't get enough distance on the header. One touch, two touches, out of his feet. Goalkeeper beaten. It rattles back off the post. First real stoppage of the game. Problem for Ishmael Mohammed here. The self inflicted, I think. This is the shot from Yasser Kassim. Goalkeeper is nowhere near that. Very unlucky not to score. And we're getting ready to celebrate. Mohammed is being led to the touchline. Will play with ten. Mustafa. Gary. Get to that. He's moving more freely now after his injury. Wad was trying to pick him out. Tim. Ala Eldin. Freedom in midfield here now for Qatar. Kadir on the overlap. Didn't get hold of the cross. Just wondered for a brief moment whether he was going to drive his laces through the shot, Kadir. He had a sight of goal briefly. And Iraq overdoing it in midfield. Abdelaziz Hatem. Not on too long. He's had very little to do, captain of Iraq, uh, goalkeeper Fahad Tali. Yusuf Hassan, on the other hand, has had uh, a little bit more on his plate in that Qatar goal away to our left. The position in Group A has changed somewhat because Oman have scored against Bahrain. And I think we can rest assured that that 
goal will have been transmitted to the Iraqi bench. They are now third in the group, and Oman, as we stand, are going through with Qatar. If Oman do take second place, they will face Group B winners, Tunisia. In quarterfinals in three days from now. Four by Hatem. Oh, got through, shouldn't have done. This is Muntari. Mohamed. Salman. Kedia. Trying to find Wad. He's out of position now. Kedia's going to have to work hard to get back here. And he did enough. A good recovery. Must have given the opponent five metres start there. Here's Mohamed. LD not closing down well enough here, Iraq. No nonsense clearance for the corner by Munaf. Just finding a little bit of space there, Qatar. As we approach half time. Aziz Hatem, captain, comes to take the corner. Very experienced, over 90 caps now, plays for the Al Ryan club. He's actually scored four goals, the corner kick taken, his last six competitive games. He's got a fine header at this tournament. Enough to beat Bahrain by that Hatem goal to nil. And into a minimum of one minute to stop his time. Abbas just having his heel clipped there by Wad. It's a poor pass. On the right, really ambitious, just close to half time. Coach will be disappointed with that. Now is not the time for the Hollywood pass. There's Cassie tracking back. Central striker there, Muntari, down by his own corner flag. The Gambian referee, Bakari Gassama, brings an end to the first half. In little circumspect, particularly from Qatar, who, of course, we know are already through. Iraq have done most of the meaningful attacking, a great chance through Bashar Ressan. And Yasser Kasim has hit a post for Petrovic's team. We've seen little of Qatar as an attacking force. Half time in Group A at the Alpine Stadium. Qatar nil, Iraq nil. كابتن كيف تقيم اداء المنتخب العراقي في الشوط الاول وكيف سيكون برايك اذا ما علمتم ان عمان 
هناك تتقدم على البحرين وبالتالي المنتخب العراقي الان بحاجه ماسه للفوز على نظيره القطري. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اكيد يعني ادى فريقنا مباراه جيده، شوط ممتاز يعني الاحظ انه ضياع عدد من من الفرص، ايضا احنا انضم عدد من اللاعبين الشباب قليلي الخبره لكنه الحمد لله ادوا ما عليهم، اكيد احنا الان عرفنا انه عمان تقدم مع الصفر، اكيد هناك حلول ربما ستقام في منتصف الشوط الثاني من اجل تعزيز النتيجه لانه هذه النتيجه ما تخدم الفريق العراقي. نعم، نصيحتكم الأخيرة إن صح القول للاعبين قبل انطلاقة الشوط الثاني ماذا ستخبرونهم بغرف تغيير الملابس؟ أكيد على التركيز تركيز وعدم الاحتباط بالكرة لأنه لاحظنا قسم اللاعبين يحتفظون بالكرة أمام فريق يجيد الدفاع بشكل جيد لذلك علينا أن نلعب الكرة السهلة نعم شكرا جزيلا لك شكرا لك شكرا Well, this has been the way of the first half. Iraq have had more of the attempts, the only two on target. Wonderful chance, which we'll see shortly for Basha Rezan. Referee from Gambia, a quietly efficient half. Had too much to do by way of discipline. No cards of any colour shown to any players in that opening 45 minutes. FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 Group A action from the magnificent Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor City. Down by the coast, where the fans have turned up in big numbers again for the hosts. Iraq have their support too. Qatar in the maroon strip already through to the quarterfinals after posting back to back wins. They are Group A winners, but Iraq, their opponents, needing a positive result to join them in the last eight. Abdul Karim, a good pass to Kasim. He's looking for Abbas, just not the accuracy on the cross. Some of the build-up play at times has been quite good from Iraq. This was the game's best opportunity. Should score here, I think, really, Rezan. If he had his time over again, I think he'd have gone for power, just like he produced with the eventual shot. If he'd done that at the first time of asking, it may well have been 1 0, but he tried to be too cute and got nowhere near enough height to trouble Youssef Hassan. The final shot was going wide. And it was mostly. Iraq attacks in the first half. Of course, the onus on them is to get the positive result. Abdul Karim just running out of pitch to his frustration. We've asked a few questions of the Qatar defence. Good cross here would lead to millimetres from Iraq leading at half-time by a goal to nil. Comes back off the inside of the post. Wonderful strike from Yasser Kassim. I mean, he renders the goalkeeper a mere spectator here. Absolutely nowhere near it, as you can see, Youssef Hassan. Kassim desperately unlucky. So, half-time. In Alcor City in Group A, Qatar nil, Iraq nil.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our teams back out for the second half. The national teams of Qatar and Iraq. Down by the coast. Well, the main industry here in Al Khor is fishing. You won't be surprised to hear. There are several beaches around these parts. Felix Sanchez will be expecting better from his, dare I say, reserve players. And I think it's shown at times in the first half that they haven't quite got the rhythm of the first choice Qatar team. Of course, already through to the quarterfinals as Group A winners with this match to spare. No surprise that the Spaniard made nine changes to the starting 11 from the last match. Iraq will be disappointed they're not a goal up and they'll be even more disappointed that Oman are a goal up. And at the moment, Iraq are losing second place. They kick off the second half in third. And you fancy that they'll need to score here tonight. No changes by either coach at half-time, incidentally. The arena which will stage the first match of next year's World Cup is ready for the second half. <laughs> Reminder, Iraq in the all-white strip. They've shown an ability to find their way through the Qatari defence on a few occasions in that first half. Just got to be more clinical with their finishing. Remember, it's really in their own hands if they win. It doesn't matter what Oman or Bahrain do in the other match taking place in Al Rayyan. A win for Iraq and they'll join Qatar on the last eight. to very good players have been rested to the bench for Qatar. Whether Sanchez has moved to use any of them, well, we'll see. He won't want to pick up any unnecessary injuries to key players ahead of the quarter-final, which will be here at the Al Bayt on Friday against the United Arab Emirates, who lost top place in Group B. They kicked off leading that section, but they were beaten by a goal to nil by Tunisia. Only goal of that match from Sefadine Jaziri, who's now the leading scorer at this Arab Cup with three goals. And let's not forget either Mauritania, one of the six African nations at this tournament, who picked up their first points of the competition. Although they're going home, they surprisingly won 2-1 against Syria. Heme Atenji with a 94th minute winner for Mauritania. And that ended Syria's hopes been beaten Tunis Tunisia by the way the group winners in their second group match Syria then lost to the bottom side Mauritania topsy-turvy group there B Tunisia lying in wait for the runners-up in group A whose identity yet to establish this is how Iraq are going to make a change here will be the first substitution of the match. We're going to see Ali Youssef coming on. Not quite yet. His arrival is imminent. Controlled by Abdel Karim. 
nothing like the potency in the Qatar attack with Almoez, Ali and Ashraf. Akram Afif missing. They do have a very good understanding that front pair for Qatar. Quality rested to the bench. Got nearly 60 international goals between them, that pair. Ali is not far away from the record goals for Qatar. He's five short at the moment. I wonder if we'll see either of them. I mentioned it must be in the mind of coach Felix Sanchez not to take too many risks with players he'll need to call upon for that last eight game against the United Arab Emirates. By the way, Qatar have got a very good recent record against the UAE. Beaten 4 0 and 4 2 in the last two meetings. Still willing to get on here. Ali Youssef for Iraq. Mohammed. Abdulaziz Hatem. Rolled it in nicely to Ala Eldin. The attack stays alive here. It's Mohamed. What about the shot? Now he can get the cross in. Glorious chance here. And turned away by Talib. His first save of any note to deny Kedir. Well, by some distance, the best we've seen so far from Qatar. Ishmael Mohamed stands it up beautifully to the far post. In race, Kedir. Fahad Talib stuck out a very important left glove there, otherwise that was 1-0 Qatar. Good save. Just a corner change happening for Iraq. Bashar Rezan, who missed that wonderful chance in the first half, as the player making way picked up a knock and will be replaced by Ali Youssef, who's the striker. Abdulaziz Hatem, Qatar captain, will take the corner. Possibilities here, and Eldin on the turn had to snatch at it. And see the frustration written all over his face that he couldn't direct it on target. The Al Garafa striker. And he's set on the opening goal there. is not getting any better I can tell you for Iraq because Oman have scored again but it doesn't matter Oman can win that by five or six nil all Iraq would need is a one nil victory but Oman are leading now by two new goals to nil against Bahrain just a win is enough for Iraq doesn't matter what happens in the other match Three teams in contention at the start of tonight to join Qatar in the last eight. Runners up in this section will play Tunisia in three days' time in the quarter final. Kasim's getting that away. Front forward by Wad. Goal kick. And had a great deal of service, Abbas. I think we can apply that to Montari, the central striker for Qatar as well. Most of the danger, such as it has been, has come from the flanks. And 
this occasion, Mohamed. Two wing backs involved there. I think it might have crept in, you know. Talib hadn't got a fingertip to it. Here's Montari, glorious turn. Stabs a shot straight down the throat of Tally. Well, that was a quite wonderful turn for Mohamed Montari. Couldn't apply the gloss finish. Here come Iraq. One goal now changes the picture in Group A for the team in white. No way through there. is Salman. Kedia. See a lot of the players wear their first names on the back of the shirts. Musa Kedia. Nicely helped on to Ishmael Mohammed. He's beginning to get forward a little bit of menace in the last few minutes. Qatari number 17. Doha born players, Mohammed, who's for Al Duhail. Here's Mohammed Wad of Al Sad. Well, Iraq know the job in hand here, they know they're going to have to win. The message from the coach. Petrovic as we look at that wonderful turn from Montari. Just the fact he has to take a, a touch after that allowed the defender to close him down. That was the difference between 0-0 and 1-0, I fancy. That's him. Wad. Good for Yusuf. Word, the Gambian referee. No fuss about Bakari Gassama, our Gambian referee. He just gets about his job in an efficient manner. Got to say that all the officials here doing an excellent job. Addressed a few hours ago by the FIFA president, Johnny Infantino, called them the elite. with the job they're doing here. Hatem. It's too long on the ball there, Alakra. Not quite what he intended there, Hisham Bassa. here enjoying this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 the tenth edition of the tournament first under the umbrella of FIFA having now FIFA's jurisdiction opportunity for further development in the game in this region has been good progress in recent years and it will only be accelerated under the FIFA banner. Could get 
it in again here. Now have. What can he do this time? Can he find an Iraqi boot? For their relief. And he's asking questions. He's an outlet now. Much better second half going forward from Qatar. You just got a feeling that Felix Sanchez was disappointed and he'd been rattling into one or two of his players at half time. Now, Hisham Bassam, only one of two players who remained from the last starting 11, is going to be replaced. Started every game in the group. Growing talent, only 23 years old. I think we'll be hearing more of this young man. Gulalem Kuki, who was a starter in the opening two group matches, comes on to replace him. Straight spot that in the centre of defence. Eldin is going to make way for Khalid Munir, who will be very grateful to get an entrance here because up to now the number 18 have been the only Qatari outfield player without any millets in the competition. Now's his chance. Del Karim for the last half an hour it would seem. If it is him coming off, certainly about to come on is Muntada Mohammed. There he is. Increasingly likely it will be Abdel Karim who will make way for Montada Mohammed. So a lot of the fans at this tournament adopting that rhythmic hand clapping that we saw at the last World Cup. Which we will see a lot more of, I'm sure. Next year, less than 12 months to go, bring it on. The excitement here is palpable. So, a lengthy treatment here for Abdel Karim. And he's going to make his way off. Incidentally, there's a very interesting development in the game. FIFA bringing performance analytics to a whole new level at this competition a team of experts are analyzing every player for every second of every game it's a groundbreaking first it will lead to a swathe of new performance insights in line with fifa's vision of increasing global competitiveness through technology there's a team of around 50 football analysts based in newport in wales in the united kingdom each of them, as I say, assigned to one player on the pitch to monitor, track and code their individual performance. It includes a player's movement with and without the ball, how many times they break through the lines of defence, how much pressure they put on the opposition ball carriers. The football language, headed up by Arsene Wenger, it's been two years in the making. And they're about to change the face of football as we know it to a degree. And at the World Cup next year, FIFA will use key metrics to better inform the television audience during live play. Something to keep an eye on. If you want to see the full story of that, it's on the FIFA website, FIFA.com. Yet into nervous territory with a capital N for Iraq. 27 minutes plus time to be added on to find that just the one goal that they'll need. They came into it knowing a win would eliminate Oman and Bahrain. There's been another goal in the other match in Group A. Oman have scored again. 3-0, they lead Bahrain, and there was an opportunity, sight 
of goal for Ali Youssef. Just didn't get hold of the shot. More power on that. A bit wider, the goalkeeper might well have been interesting. Time here for Mohamed Wad. Best of clearances from him. A little bit of momentum, more than a bit that Qatar had in the early minutes of the second half was abated somewhat. And Iraq now getting more possession. Still, I haven't found a goal in open play here at this Arab Cup competition. The team in white. And one goal, a 98th minute penalty, and that was after the initial penalty had been saved. After a VAR review, it was deemed that the Oman goalkeeper had moved off his goal line. Penalty kick taker was changed. Abdel Karim come off the substitutes bench in that match scored and is the goal it has Iraq just one goal here against Qatar this evening away from the quarter-finals of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 but here come the host nation now looking to make it a, a maximum from the three Group A games Look, the more dangerous team in the second half particularly when this man's been on the ball Too many for Ishmael Mohammed on that occasion. You can see the Iraqi flags around the arena. Just hoping against hope that their team can find some attacking prowess to really put some concerted pressure now on the Qatar defence. They'll know what they have to do. They'll know what Amman are doing in the other match against Bahrain. Here's Wad. Mohammed. Hatem. Now Mohammed. More touches than anybody out there this evening. Slowly, Qatar build up. All this play in front of Iraq. Wide with an ambitious effort. Spins away for the corner. There is an element, certainly, of Qatar conserving energy, even though a lot of the players who have started tonight, won't be starting against the UAE in the quarter-final here in three days' time. A couple more arrivals off the bench for the hosts in a moment. In time, Abdelaziz Hatem is standing over this corner kick. Big hole right in the middle of that Iraq penalty area for Montari and company to run into. Partial man-to-man -man marking, partial zone marking here from Iraq. There's that area that I was talking about. Monteri danced into it, couldn't control the volley under pressure. Not an easy chance. I have to say, a little curious setup there from Iraq from that corner. There was the space. Always seemed likely that some maroon shirt could dive into it. Montari did that. It wasn't too far away from the game's opening goal. That a little bit lower, and that's 1 0, I think. Treatment for the Ghanaian born striker. Off goes Ali Asadala. 
One or two of the main men are in now. And there is Ali Hassan Alhedos. And we're talking the big heads now. I'm kidding. But the point is that these are these are the top boys. These are the, the regulars. Alhedos is the record cap holder for Qatar, close to 160. Yeah, 160 international appearances for number 10, Alhedos. And now there is Ali. Another player who's come on for the ailing Montari. Anwes Ali is a very interesting player. Came up through the Aspire Academy. It's been very successful here in Qatar. It's produced a number of fine athletes. <laughs> so the end of Montari's evening. Bad effort. And he set his sights there, Mohamed Kassim. Scored both goals in the last meeting between these two nations. And the Iraq win. He drilled that powerfully with his left foot. Shuffling the ball out here to Alhedos, the two substitutes linking already. Back towards uh, Ali, in order to get the touch he required. Quality. With due respect to the starting 11 for Qatar has uh, risen considerably with the arrival of Ali and Alhedos. And it's Alhedos again. Got the captain's armband. And very nearly a captain's example. That crossbar is still shaking. At him. Well, it's Qatar who are asking the questions. It's Iraq who need a goal. But the host's very nearly in front. He couldn't have hit that any sweeter. It is right off the sweet spot. He was waving it goodbye. Actually gets a fingertip onto that. I'm doing him a disservice. What a save! Didn't look like it on first viewing, but if he doesn't get fingertips, it really just brushes off the end of his fingertips. I think that's in. A wonderful save by Fahad Talib. What a wonderful replay as well, if I might say so. It showed it just brushing off the, the fingertips of the Iraqi keeper. to make the breakthrough for them, he's their playmaker, really. They need to get him on the ball as much as possible. The number 19, the white shirts of Iraq, Mohamed Kassim. He's in that number 10 role, just behind Abbas, the central striker. He's going to gather pace, too much for Ali Youssef. Alhedos. 
winning the woodwork here. Let's have a look. The fingertip save here. All the angles suggested he got fingertips to it. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> it was a save, but it, what is not in any doubt is that it was a quite brilliant strike from Alhados. At him. Both sides hit the woodwork at the same end. No free kick. Great position taken up by the Gambian referee. Free kick against Gulalem Kuki. From the wrong side, really, there. Little change here for Iraq. As you can see the Ayman Hussein, number 10, and number 17, Ahmed Fadil. Mustafa Nadim, defender coming off. This is a midfielder and a striker coming on. So it's a change of shape here for Iraq. They're putting more attacking players on. Although they're taking their central striker off in Abbas. But the straight replacement for him is Damon Hussein. The player who missed that penalty late on against Oman. Looked like it's going to be costly. And VAR found that the goalkeeper had come off his line. It was retaken. He was taken out of the equation, Hussein. And Abdel Karim stepped up to score a crucial penalty for Iraq. If that hadn't gone in, they wouldn't be in the position of just one goal needed to make the quarter-finals. So all they've got to do, win this game 1-0 Iraq, and they're through. They're very, very close with that. Throwing strike from Alhados and going a goal down. This has been a tournament of late drama. Late, late goals. Wouldn't rule out another here. And Sir Kassim winning the corner kick. Who hit the post in the first half for Iraq. It's Mohamed Kassim. <laughs> put some quality on this. Plenty of white shirts to hit. Five inside the box, two just outside, waiting for anything that might come their way. Goalkeeper commits. All the pressure off his defenders there, Yusuf Hassan. And this time, less trouble. seen by far the fewest number of goals in this Arab Cup. Before this one got underway, there'd only been six. Oman have lifted the total a little bit against Bahrain in the other match. Nothing here at the Alpine Stadium. Concentration for the team in white to keep the back door shut, can't afford to concede, and then find some inspiration. The skill required to break the Qatar defence down and get that goal that they desperately crave. But here's Mohamed for Qatar on the way, Zali didn't get a hold of it. Well, he'd be disappointed with that. His first real sight, apart from that volley. In the corner, it was uh, half a chance earlier, but should have been asking more of Fahad Talib in the Iraq goal there, Ali. There's Cassie. Yusuf.
Gassim. Why not? So he's hit the post. Seemed to go through the goalkeeper's hand there. Yusuf Hassan. I think it goes behind him and off the post. Yep, doesn't get there. That's twice Iraq have hit the post, once in each half. What a terrific strike for Mohamed Kassim. On his 25th birthday, that would have been the ultimate birthday present. Well, we're talking fine margins here between Iraq's success and failure. At the moment, they are failing. They need to win. exploit some gaps because they're taking more and more risks now as ahead of the ball Iraq With ten minutes plus additional time to find the one goal they need they must stay resolute at the back here's Ismail Mohammed here's a handball only from Ismail Mohammed no other arms raised in maroon shirts here they are they're having a look at it of course nevertheless Kassim. Hussein. Yusuf. And took it off the feet of the more gifted Mohamed Kassim. Here's the appeal for the penalty. Can't get that. Did strike the arm, but there was nothing deliberate from Riot. And the crowd are going to get a, a late cameo from a player they love here. And they love a goal now, and it might fly, and it has! And it just had to be him! Out of nine for the Group A winners. The perfect start to the Arab Cup tournament, and for Petrovic's Iraq, they're sliding out of the competition at this stage. They need two goals now. A star of the present, a history maker, Al Moez Ali, because. He had become, before this Arab Cup, the first player in history to score in three competitions. The Asian Cup, the Copa America and the CONCACAF Gold Cup. And he struck gold here at Al Bayt. His 37th senior international goal. Trails Mubakar Mustafa by just four goals. Just to add to the excitement, the gifted Akram Afif is coming on to replace Abdullah Alara. Goal and an assist so far in this group for Afif, exciting player. Two main strikers for Qatar along for the last seven minutes or so. Behind. 
Mustafa's goal-scoring record and then in the mood for another now. Seconds after coming on, Afif doubles Qatar's lead. They're sweeping through to the quarter-finals in buoyant mood. Smiles everywhere you look, but not for that man. He was left exposed. And Iraq are heading home. Can't see them scoring three goals in six minutes, can you? And they were wide open down the middle of their defence. You didn't doubt Afif for a single second. His second goal of the tournament. She goes through the legs of Talib. How to whip up the crowd, Akram Afif. The Al Sad striker with his 23rd senior international goal. As the first Qatari player a few years ago to sign for La Liga club in Spain. He spent a short spell with Villarreal. Two main men in terms of goals at this tournament for Qatar have delivered. Two goals, barely three minutes, a little over two minutes. Could have been a different story for Iraq. Their two efforts, that nil nil, not hit a post, but gone just a few millimeters inside. These are the fine margins we often talk about between success and failure. What might have been. Stop! Come on! Qatar will be posting the only 100% record so far in the group. That could change tomorrow. They won another! And it should have been. That's quite a miss from Khalid Munir. Set up by Al Moez Ali. Go for placement here. Should do. He goes for power. Just need to hit it with the instep for me from there. Just pass it into the corner of the net. Know, it's an easy game from the commentary box, but if he had his time over again, he'd have had another choice, I think. Won't matter. Will matter for Munir because he'd love to have been a scorer at the Arab Cup. But chance passed him by. VAR checking for a possible penalty. Over. Cassie. So good night for Oman. Disappointing evening for Iraq. Games, Kadir and Mohammed. One of Algeria or Egypt could also make it a 100% record from Group D. They've both won their opening two group games. They're facing off tomorrow for top spot in Group D. Algeria, Egypt. And there's a rivalry down the years. They're no less intense tomorrow. We can be assured of that. But we do know six of our eight quarter finalists. Qatar. In this group will confirm the 
the screen through with him from Blue Bay officially in a few moments when this game is over. Tunisia won Group B, UAE finished runners-up in Group B. Morocco were already through with a game to spare in Group C. And as I said, Algeria and Egypt are through from Group D. So North Africa well represented the four major powerhouses of that region. We'll be in the quarter-finals here in Qatar in the FIFA Arab Cup 2021. And here's Afif. Oh, Rick, it's four against two here. Out of fuel, out of luck, Iraq. And luck shines upon them as Afif fails to find the top corner. But they were so shy of defenders there, Iraq. I've had the opportunities to have uh, doubled the advantage to 4-0. Not sure they'd have deserved that kind of scoreline. It's not been four goals between these two teams, far from it. And remember, Iraq have hit the post twice. Hit the crossbar as well as the two goals from substitutes. That's the man who hit the bar, Al Hados. Ali and Thief came on to do the damage in terms of finding the back of the net. We're into a minimum of five extra minutes. Can Iraq get a consolation here? Find their first goal in open play of the tournament. Just one goal and a penalty. Not enough elevation on the Yusuf header. Qatar will be back here on Friday. We will be with them for that quarter-final against the United Arab Emirates, who lost top spot in Group B earlier today after losing 1-0 against Tunisia, who took the top position. And play the winners up in Group A. We know who that's going to be. Ten. Ali, Afif, look for one another all the time, those two, telepathic understanding. Which augurs well for the rest of this tournament and the World Cup next year, where of course the competition will be fierce, they know that. Qatar's build-up to this tournament has been good, they had a ten-day spell in Marbella in Spain. native country, of course, of their head coach, Felix Sanchez. <laughs> this progress from the Qatari national team just adding to the excitement in this country as the World Cup bandwagon will roll into town in less than 12 months from now. Where you're not more than an hour away, and in some cases 20 to 30 minutes away from every stadium. Unique. One big party. And all of us just can't wait for it to happen. Here's Mohammed. up to five goals for the tournament now, conceded only one, they're not about to declare on five it would seem, Hedos! A very good evening's work, I talked about the quality of the available substitutes for the coach Felix Sanchez off the bench and we've witnessed it, all three goals coming from the three attacking players he brought on. First Ali, then Afif, and now I mean, he assumed the captain's armband when he came on Al Hados. Pictures of elation and despair here. There's two stories we're looking at. It's 
served up on the plate here for Alhedos. Never looked likely to miss. 30 year old. Spent over 20 years at Qatar's top club, Al Sadd. What a servant he's been for them and for the national team. No popular goal scorer than him. 3 0 Qatar. Too far away in Iraqi eyes. <laughs> 82, 84, 94. 12 very damaging minutes for Iraq. moments well, I do think it might have been a different story what a lift it would have been for Iraq if one of their two efforts one in each half hadn't hit a post could have gone in but it was Qatar through those substitutes al Ali Akram Afif Finally, Hassan Alhedos that did the damage in those 12 minutes. And Iraq are heading home. They've been pipped to second spot in the group by Oman. And final score at Al Bayt. We'll see Qatar again here on Friday. They've beaten Iraq in Group A by three goals to nil. they needed there was even a scenario where they could lose if the other match had been drawn well, they might have got through needed them to have scored a goal and maybe not lost by more than two but all that out of the window now they came for the win really Petrovic's team they deluded them despite the promptings of Mohamed Kassi they lick their wounds and they come back Still got an opportunity of getting third place in the World Cup qualifying group. It will take them into a playoff with another Asian team. And if they won that, it would be a playoff against the fifth team that places in the Commonwealth region in South America. So they're not totally out of the picture for coming back here for the big one in under 12 months' time. the performance of the players today well i think it was not easy game for us because uh, we were already qualified and as a first but i think all of them they show their their commitment and and that they really want to make the people proud of the team we appreciate all the support that we got today it's nice to see the stadium supporting us in this way so it was a good game good performance and now it's done now. It's time to recover and to think about the next game. Okay, what's your opinion about your experienced players like Al Muaz, Akram, and Al Hidoz? They enter at the second half and they all of them score. Well, this is uh, it's it's nice that the players they come inside and and they are they are able to to play and to score goals to help the team. That's the key of the players when they go inside to try to help the team. Today it was the case, but it was a. Uh, a group work, not an individual. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, Coach. Thank, thank you very you. much. Coach, hard luck. Uh, you missed the first uh, half, but in finally, it's a big uh, loss, 3 0. Yes. You have twin in game and you lose 3 0 from 80 minutes to, na to, to, to 90 minutes because we play a fantastic game, we create a lot of chances, you didn't score the goal, 
and then finally we get a little bit tired and the last minute you lose the game. Your future with this uh, team, with this young team? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have, uh, it's very strange if you give the compliments after 3-0 after losing, but I am very proud of, uh, of guys because they come here, here and we show us in positive way all three games. We didn't win, but this is a good future for, uh, for Iraqi football. Thank you very much, Coach. كابتن مبروك لكم هذا الانتصار ثلاثة انتصارات على التوالي حدثنا بأداء المجموعة رغم عديد التغييرات اليوم أول شيء الحمد لله رب العالمين على الفوز هارد لك لأخواننا منتخب العراق والجمهور العراقي أتوقع اليوم أثبتنا أن احنا فريق قوي يعني لعبنا باللعيبة اللي ما شاركوا في أول مبارتين قدروا يطلعون بصورة طيبة قدروا يؤدون المباراة طيبة بعدها اتوقع في اخر 20 دقيقه يوم جات الاهداف اتوقع منتخب العراق ضغط شوي حاول يفوز يعني ما عنده خيار الا يفوز عشان يتاهل وتيحت لنا المساحات والحمد لله قدرنا نستغل هذه المساحات باحسن طريقه يعني نعم المباراه القادمه ستكون امام الابيض الاماراتي بذكريات خليجي الاخير نصف نهائي كاس اسيا رايك عن المباراه القادمه لا اكيد ما راح تكون نفس مباريات السابقه مع الامارات اعتقد منتخب جديد المباراه راح تكون صعبه نتمنى التوفيق فيها ونطلع بالفوز نتاهل لنصف النهائي ان شاء الله شكرا جزيلا لك كابتن عفوا حياك الله كابتن بشار هارد لك قدر الله ما شاء فعال خروج من الدور الاول يعني لو نشيل العشر دقائق الاخيره اللي انهار فيها الفريق مردود كان جيد في اغلب المباريات للمنتخب العراقي بما فيهم 80 دقيقه اليوم اول شيء نعتذر من جمهورنا طبعا مباراه الشوط الاول اعتقد ما كنا سيئين كنا جيدين حصلنا فرص ما استغلينا الفرص يعني الشوط الاول المنتخب ما كان بذيك الخطوره لكن الشوط الثاني صار عندنا نزول مستوى البدني اللي كل مباراه جاي نعاني منه واعتقد انه المدرب ايضا صرح بالوسائل الاعلام انه يعني نتيجه الدوري العراقي ممكن الرتم ماله مو عالي جدا ومن يجون لاعبين شباب يلعبون في هكذا بطوله مع منتخب بطل اسيا وايضا منتخب عمان ومنتخب بحرين على مستوى عالي دائما نشوف الشوط الثاني عندنا نزول بالمستوى البدني يعني كنا نتمنى فرح جمهورنا يعني مباراه كانت صعبه امام المنتخب القطري هارد لك فريقنا هارد لك جمهورنا هارد لك اللاعبين مبروك المنتخب القطري شكرا بشار شكرا. Final look at the statistics from this Group A match. Qatar always carried the extra possession. Eventually, they overtook Iraq in terms of the attempts and indeed those on target. Very well refereed game, I might add, by Bakari Gassama of Gambia. Had an excellent match. The FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021, the host Qatar, before the ball was kicked against Iraq this evening at the wonderful Al Bayt Stadium. Already group winners, already through to the quarterfinals. Iraq needing to win, possibly a draw might be enough. And they went very close in the first half to taking the lead through a terrific strike from Yasser Kassim. to the second half now and Alhaidos coming on off the substitute bench the record cap holder thumping the crossbar will be the last time we would see the woodwork hit this time Iraq Mohammed Kassim nil nil oh, you just think it might have been a slightly different story if those had been just a little closer to finding the back of the net and were very close as it was but the substitutes Really told as far as Qatar are concerned. They've got quality off the bench. They rested nine of their normal first choice starting 11. And one of those, Almawe Zali, danced his way into the Iraq penalty area. And it was a sure finish. Rolled it beyond a helpless Fahad Tali. Goal in the 82nd minute. At this stage, Iraq needed two goals with Iman going so well in the other Group A match against Bahrain. 
but it got worse for Iraq when another substitute, Akram Afif, came on just two minutes after Ali had scored. Afif was at it with his second goal of the tournament. And that was good night as far as Iraq's hopes were concerned of reaching the quarterfinals. You see, it actually goes to the legs of the goalkeeper, Fahad Talib, in the end. One substitute scored, second substitute scored. Why not make it a triple? Set up for the Qatari record cap holder. Close to 160 international appearances. And the crowd and his teammates really enjoyed that for Al Haydos. The 94th minute, a perfect finish to a perfect Group A. Nine points out of nine, the only team with a 100% record at this stage of the competition after three group matches. So another good evening's work for Qatar. Realistic chance of travelling deeper still into this competition. How good does that look if your allegiance lies to Qatar? Can't ask for much more than that. Good evening's work for Oman. They beat Bahrain 3 0 in the other match in Al Rayyan. Disappointment for Iraq and Bahrain never really competitive. Well, that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage from myself, Kevin Keatings, and all of the team. Until the next time, goodbye.